Podcast number one is brought to you by Mad Marco Enterprises. Show idea, concept, and design by Marco Liberati. Please enjoy the show. <laughs> Cheers. Tell us another one. A show with tall tales, jokes, and antidotes. And now, please welcome your host, Marco Liberati. Thank you, thank you very much, thank you, thank you, thank you. Wow, what a fantastic audience. Uh, thank you guys for coming out and being part of our uh, Tell Us Another One show. Uh, we're going to uh, tell you a joke and then we'll tell you another one. So uh, here goes, I'll tell you a little story about, uh, I was invited to a Bucks night. I'm at this Bucks night and there's two beautiful strippers come over to me. And uh, one says her name's Mercedes and the other one says her name is Portia. I'm like... Really? Oh, hello, Mercedes. Hello, Porsche. I don't know if you're left out, so I said, uh, my name's Hyundai. <laughs> so there was a zebra, and he didn't know his entire life whether he was a white zebra with black stripes or a black zebra with white stripes. And it got to the point where he's gone, this is it, I don't care if I'm going to end my life doing this, I'm going to go to the king of the jungle, I'm going to ask the king of the jungle, the big lion, what I am. I need the answers. So he's gone to the king of the jungle, he's gone, right, he goes, am I a white zebra with black stripes or a black zebra with white stripes? And the lion goes, well, there's only one person that can answer that question and that's the man upstairs. And with that, the lion lets out a massive, terrifying roar, scares the crap out of him, and he dies. He's upstairs at the Golden Gates, he says, St. Peter, I need to know my dying wish, am I a white zebra with black stripes or a black zebra with white stripes? He goes, well, mate, I'm going to let you through the Golden Gates Go and see the big man, ask him the question, and hopefully that satisfies you. So finally, he makes it all the way to the big man, and he's gone, am I a white zebra with black stripes or a black zebra with white stripes? And he says, you are what you are. (laughs) (laughs) And with that, the zebra is just bang, shot back to earth with a shot of light and comes back to life again. And he springs up on his feet and the lion's like, what happened? He goes, mate, I saw the big man upstairs and he said, I asked him the question, am I black zebra, white stripes, white zebra, black stripes? And he said, you are what you are. And the lion goes, oh, well then you're a white zebra with black stripes. He goes, how'd you work that out? He goes, mate, if you were a black zebra with white stripes, he would have said, you is what you is. I hope I haven't offended anybody with that joke. I'm really sorry. That was a bit racist. I'm sorry. It's just a joke. Just a joke. Oh, the run sheet, which is over there. Do we have uh, joke off next? We have joke off. We have joke off. Now it's time for our special guest to come upstairs. Uh, so please welcome to the stage local Melbourne comedian, ladies and gentlemen, Alex Keane. Hey. Thank you. Uh, we can do a little segment that we like to call Joke Off. Oh, yes. Uh, so uh, I believe you prepared a couple of jokes. Oh, yeah. I took this segment extremely seriously. <coughs> <laughs> well, you committed to memory, I see. Yes, yes. That's great. Phone memory. You go first. <laughs> okay, okay. I'll start off with a, uh, with a little joke that I've prepared. And this one here is on my notebook on my other page. Oh, yes. I too came prepared. <laughs> oh, yes. Can you tell which one's a baby boomer and which one's a millennial? <laughs> yeah, I'll read that one. I'll read that one. Just a moment while I get my glasses out. <laughs> oh, yes. All righty. So uh, this one is a joke about Thor, the god of thunder. He's asked his dad, 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 I want to go down to Earth. I want to meet a beautiful woman. And he was refused time after time after time. Finally, his dad goes, all right, son, you've got one week. Get down there, do what you've got to do, and he comes straight back up top. So anyway, he goes down there, he meets this beautiful woman, and she's got this lisp. And he goes, hey, can't smoke a thought, you're really nice, thanks. He goes, um, you know, can we get a hotel room? Can we get a hotel room together? And she's like, oh, yes, that'll be nice. Well, you know, she's very impressed with him, she's very, imp- he's very impressed with her. So they go to the hotel room, and uh, these guys, they can't keep their hands off each other. Right? They're going for it day after day after day, day three, right? She's gone to the toilet and he's thought, oh, I'm going to have to confess, I'm going to let her know that this is all going to come to an end and I'm, you know, I'm, hitting, I'm a god of thunder, I'm going to head back up top. So anyway, she gets out of the toilet and he goes, look, I've got a confession to make. I'm actually Thor. And she goes, oh, you're so Thor, I'm so Thor, I can hardly piss. That's over you.
so I um, <laughs> so I got a different brief. Uh, my, <laughs> my brief said one-liners. Uh, so I didn't write any. I just got Googled a couple. But uh, uh, I was wondering why the frisbee kept getting bigger and bigger, and then it hit me. <laughs> That, and that, that's back to you. That's great. That's great. Yeah. All right. Well, I've got one that's not a one-liner. Uh, so uh, it's a little Johnny joke. Uh, it's a little Johnny's at school, and the teacher says, "Hey, Johnny," he goes, "If I was to give you two cats, and then two cats, and another two cats, how many cats would you have?" And he goes, seven. He goes, oh, "Okay, uh, let's try something different. What if I gave you two apples, and then another two apples, and then another two apples? How many apples will you have?" And he goes, six. Right. So she goes, okay, but if I gave you two cats, and then another two cats, and another two cats, how many cats have you got? He goes, seven. And she says, how did you come up with seven cats? He goes, I've already got a cat at home, miss. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's my last one. And um, look, I'm going to be honest with you guys. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Uh, I want to die peacefully in my sleep like my grandfather, not screaming and yelling like the passengers in his car. <laughs>
in, out, and oh yeah, and then you remove the finger, and you'll find that the smell of cuck is completely removed, and it's now replaced by the pungent smell of some sort of fertilizer. Tune in next week, where we try and remove the stink of fertilizer from the soil. This mist. I am Reg Demented Senior Sergeant Major Clean. I've dug myself all the way through to China just to see if we can get rid of that cuck from the soil. Australia. Shit. We missed. Tune in next week. We'll teach you how to use a satellite navigation unit to direct yourself around the globe. At these. I was at my nonna's house, for the Aussies out there, that's your grandma, and I was at her house and she said to me, she goes, Mariana, ma, how come a stranger people keep coming to my door? Ma, stranger people, I don't even know. I said, oh, what do you mean? She said, ma, the other day, I'm a sit at home, I watch the bowl, they're beautiful. I hear a knock on the door. I say, ma, who is he? Who is he? Yeah, g'day, it's, uh, it's Cheryl and Tim. Cheryl and Tim? Ma, I know nobody from this and I. If they say Maria and Josepina, all right. But Cheryl and Tim? Hmm. Open the door. I say, yes, sir, how can I help you? Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, g'day, I'm um, um, Cheryl, my hubby Tim. You see, my car's broken down from a really long drive from a Wagga Wagga. I say, my who you call it a Wagga Wagga? <laughs> no, no, I just, I just want to come inside. I just want to use the phone. I just want to call the RAC, right? I said, hmm. How come are you choose my house? Out of all of the other house on the street. How come you choose my house? <laughs> I know why. You and Shelly and Tim and Tim, you're gonna pretend to come inside my house. You're gonna see my lounge room with my Franco Cozzo three piece leather lounge suite with the plastic still on the seats. Hmm? You're gonna come in pretend to use the phone, call RPP. But really, really when I'm not home, my you gonna come back and you gonna take everything from me. You gonna steal it from me. So I say, my you piss off and you don't come back. I tell you, I never seen such a fatty run so fast in my life. I said, my you know call the RPP. You call it the Jenny Craig or the Weight Watcher. <laughs> Another time I sit down and hear a knock on the door. I say, who is he? And they say, it's the Good Friday appeal. I open the door, I say, ma, today is no Good Friday. Today is a ma, no bad Sunday. <laughs> now, I'm here to raise money for the Good Friday appeal for the Royal Children's Hospital. I said, ah, so you want me to give you money for the Royal children who's in a hospital. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm a sorry. But I think of the Queen. I think of the Queen, she got enough of money for the royal children. <laughs> but not me. I'm under the pension. <laughs> but one time, you know, one time such a lovely, I hear a knock on the door. Tricky, 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 tricky. I think, oh, what's this, a tricky, tricky? I open the door. Oh, stand there, three beautiful children, you know? One dress up like a new big pumpkin, beautiful, you know? Another one dress up like a new black cat, you know? Put the whiskey like that, you know, little ears and the tail, beautiful, you know? 
Another one, dress up like a new scary, be a ghost, you know? Put the shit, cut the eyes, to be scary, you know? And then they stand there with the lolly, you know? Tricky, 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 tricky. <laughs> My these children, they cannot even afford the proper clothes. <laughs> but they come to bring me, me the lolly. I take a lolly. <laughs> I look at them like this, and they look at me like this. <laughs> we no need no words, nothing. But we understand one another. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. <laughs>
and they find everyone that was there. And I love that story. <laughs> it's a great story. Because it just confirms a rumour that we've all heard at one point or another in our lives. That KFC is infested with rats. <laughs> <laughs> Also, I just love the idea of being snitched on by Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> like, I don't know if you guys have been lately, but they're like not famous for their attentive staff, you know? <laughs> These are a bunch of kids that didn't get the Macca's jobs. <laughs> I, um, I had my own little run-in with law enforcement last year in the pandemic. My, my issue was, not dissimilar to the KFC's, but my issue was when all the COVID rules came in, I was like, all right, I've got to do the right thing. I'm going to take it seriously. And I did, I took it so seriously that I, I kind of just stopped paying attention to the normal laws that are regularly in. <laughs> so what happened was I, was I was at home in my share house and my housemate and I, we decided to, um, we decided to smoke a little bit of weed just because we were so bored. And also because that's what we do every night. <laughs> so we did, right? We smoked, we smoked a little bit of weed and then, I don't know, 15 minutes has gone by and I started to get really, really hungry, which, I won't get into tonight, but just so everyone in the room is aware, getting hungry is like a little known side effect of smoking marijuana. <laughs> so we've got a really good Thai restaurant not far from our place. I've put up the Uber Eats app and we're looking through the menu and we're, we're like stoned, you know? So we're looking through the menu and I'm like, oh gee, it all looks pretty good. Oh, it all looks pretty good. Why don't, why don't we just order one of everything on the menu? We just order one of everything on the menu. It doesn't matter if there's leftovers, we'll use them for lunches tomorrow. Prawns keep pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> Ended up spending $271 on Thai food. <laughs> and then like another 15 minutes went by and I started to get really, really paranoid, which I won't get into tonight, but just so everyone in the room is aware, it's like a little known side effect of smoking <laughs> marijuana. I was, I was paranoid, right? Because this is right after the whole KFC stories broke. So I was like, oh, shit. What if, what if the Thai restaurant think that the reason I've ordered so much food is because I'm having my own house party? So, I shit you not, I made this phone call to my local Thai joint, just high as a kite, and I was like, yeah, g'day, it's Alex here from the Uber Eats order. Yeah, look, I just wanted to let you know there's no need to alert the authorities. We're not having a house party, we're just doing drugs. <laughs> I, um, I'll tell you this and then I'll get out of here. I, um, I went and I rejoined the gym lately, uh, recently, and I haven't... I haven't been to the gym in like 10 years. Can you guys tell? <laughs> no, you can't tell? No, it's because I'm jacked, right? Yeah, no, it's I'm just kidding, I'm obviously kidding. I realise that I look like a malnourished version of Jason Statham. <laughs> no, it's fine. Uh, so I went and I rejoined the gym and because I haven't been in like 10 years, I don't really know what everyone's doing in the exercise world, what everyone's doing in the healthy eating world, you know, like I'm kind of out of touch. So I thought, Maybe I would just ask someone who was working out there because, you know, it's a pretty friendly gym. So I did. I went up and I asked this one guy. And the reason I picked this guy in particular was because he had those shoes on that have like the finger toes. You know them? Yeah. And he had a shirt on that said, ketogenic warrior. And I thought to myself, oh, I'll bet this cockhead's itching to give someone advice. <laughs> so I was like, hey, man, I'm sort of just getting back into all this sort of stuff and uh, I don't really know what everyone's doing in the health world, what everyone's doing in the you know, exercise world. And he was like, well, if you're just getting back into it, uh, you're probably, your body's gonna need a cleanse. And I was like, oh yeah, cleanse, that's a pretty good idea. And he said, when I cleanse, I do a coffee enema. And I didn't know what a coffee enema was. Does anyone in the room know what a coffee enema is? <laughs> yeah, a few, okay. For those who don't know, I'll explain it to you. This is the exact way he explained it to me. He was like, oh mate, so simple, all you do is, you just get, just get a really strong coffee and you put, it, you put it up your backside and the whole idea is you'll do a really big poo afterwards and you'll feel better. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> I do not know this guy well enough to tell him <laughs> that the same thing happens if you drink it. <laughs> hey, I've been Alex Keane. Thanks so much for having me. Okay, one more time, ladies and gentlemen, Alex Keane. Thank you guys very much for coming out, supporting live comedy. You guys have been awesome.
And uh, also, don't forget, we're supporting Heart Kids Children's Charity. And uh, if you guys could kindly give a donation at the end of the night, that would be much appreciated. So thank you guys for coming out. Give yourselves a round of applause. Thank you. Good night. And remember, be good and good things happen.